Hello everybody, this is Mike History 2 and I am back to talk about the worst people in history again and today I will be talking about Gavrilo Princip. Now, I'm not sure how many people are even watching this series at this point because my last two videos got very few views but please, if you're watching this video and you didn't watch my last two videos, please go watch those. So the eighth worst person in history is Gavrilo Princip. Now I know some of you will disagree, but hear me through this. So Gavrilo Princip was born in Obolyai or something in Austria, now in Bosnia and Herzegovina on July 25th, 1895, no, 1894, to Maria and Petar Princip. Despite his father's opposition, Princip first began attending school in 1903, age 9. At the age of 13, Princip moved to Sarajevo, where his older brother Jovan intended to enroll him into an Austrian military school. By the time Princip reached Sarajevo, Jovan had changed his mind after a friend advised him not to make Gavrilo an executioner of his own people. Princip was enrolled into a merchant school instead. Jovan paid for his tuition with the money he had earned. After three years of study, Gavrilo transferred to a local gymnasium. In 1910, 1910, he came to revere Bogdan Zerajic, a Bosnian Serb revolutionary who attempted to assassinate Marian Varishanin, the Austrian governor of Bosnia and Herzegovina, before committing suicide. In 1911, Princip joined Young Bosnia, a society that wanted to separate Bosnia from Austria-Hungary and unite it with neighboring Serbia. Because the local authorities had forbidden students from forming organizations and clubs, Princip and other members of Young Bosnia met in secret. 1912, Princip was expelled from school for being involved in a demonstration against Austria. Princip went from class to class, threatening with his knuckle duster all the boys who weren't sure about coming to the new demonstration. Wow, that seems like a peaceful way of getting people on your side. Princip left Sarajevo shortly after being expelled and made the 280 kilometers journey to Belgrade, Serbia on foot. In Belgrade, Princip volunteered to join the Serbian guerrilla bands fighting the Ottoman Sultanate under the leadership of Major Vojislav Tankosic. Tankosic was a member of the Black Hand, the foremost conspiracy society in Serbia at the time. I mean, with a name like that, of course it's a conspiracy society. At first, Princip was rejected at a recruitment office in Belgrade because he was too short, okay? In rage, he tracked down Tankosic himself, who also told him that he's too small and weak. Man, get humiliated. So he returned to Bosnia and stayed with his brother in Sarajevo. He spent the next several months moving back and forth between Sarajevo and Belgrade. In Belgrade, he met Zivoyin Rafavljovic, one of the founders of the Serbian Chetnik organization, who sent him to the Chetnik training center in Vranje. There they met with school manager Mihailo Stevanovic Kupara. Princip practiced shooting using bombs in the blade after which training was completed and he returned to Belgrade. In 1913, while Princip was staying in Sarajevo, Austria declared a state of emergency, implemented martial law, seized control of all schools, and prohibited all Serb cultural organizations. On June 28, 1914, Gavrilo Princip participated in the assassination in Sarajevo of the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Duchess Sophie of Hohenberg, which is what he's most famous for. The Emperor of Austria and King of Hungary, Bohemia, Dalmatia, Croatia, Slavonia, Galicia, Lodomeria, and Illyria, Franz Joseph I of Austria told his nephew, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, to oversee military training in Bosnia. Franz Ferdinand knew that the visit would be dangerous. Um, in fact, his uncle, Franz Joseph I of Austria, had been the subject of an assassination attempt by the Black Hand in 1911, and so he had the genius idea of going back because somehow it wouldn't be different. Just before 10 a.m. on Sunday, the royal couple arrived in Sarajevo by train. The royal couple were then taken to a car, uh, then to take a car into the city. Franz and Sophie were in the second car with Oskar Potiorek and Lieutenant Colonel Count Franz von Harak. The car's top was rolled back in order to allow the crowds a good view of its occupants. The six conspirators lined the route. The first conspirator on the route to see the royal car was Mohamed Mehmed Basic. However, Mehmed Basic lost his nerve and allowed to the car to pass without taking action. Coward. 
At 10.15, when the six-car procession passed the central police station, Nedeljko uh, Chabrinovich, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, sorry, hurled a hand grenade at the Archduke's car. The driver accelerated when he saw the object flying towards him, but the bomb had a 10-second delay and exploded under the wheel of the fourth car. Two of the occupants, Eric von Merizzi and Count Alexander von Bus Valdek, were seriously wounded. After Chabrinovich's bomb missed the car, five other conspirators, including Princip, lost an opportunity to attack because of the heavy crowds and the car's high speed. To avoid capture, Chabrinovich swallowed a cyanide capsule and made a jump for it into the Milyaka River to make sure he died. However, the pill was decayed and only made him sick, and the river was 10 centimeters deep. He was soon hauled out and arrested by police. Wow, what a failure. Ferdinand later decided to go to the hospital and visit the victims of Kabrinovich's grenade attack. In order to avoid the center of the city, General Oskar Potiorek decided that the royal car should travel straight to the Sarajevo hospital. However, Potiorek forgot to inform the driver, Leopold Loika, about this decision. On the way to the hospital, Loika took a right turn. Princip was standing near a cafe when he spotted the car as it drove past, having taken the wrong turn. After realizing the mistake, the driver put his foot on the brake and began to reverse. In doing so, the engine stalled and the gears locked, giving Princip his opportunity. Princip stepped forward, drew his pistol, and at a distance of about one and a half meters, fired twice into the car, first hitting Franz Ferdinand in the neck and then hitting his wife Sophie in the stomach after she covered his body. They both died before 11 a.m. Princip, just like his girlfriend, friend, also attempted suicide with a cyanide pill, but it, it didn't succeed either. Then he tried to shoot himself, but then the pistol was wrestled from his hand before he had a chance to fire another shot. Princip was 19 years old and too young to receive the death penalty, being 27 days short of the 20-year minimum age limit required by Austrian law. Instead, he received the maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. Or they could have just waited like a few more days and then he'd be 20 and shoot him. But anyways, he was held in harsh conditions, which were worsened by the war, and got tuber tu tuberculosis. He died on April 28, 1918, at, at Tirzin, Austria, now in the Czech Republic. Now, I think the reason I, uh, you can figure out why he's on this list is because, as a lot of you know, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria would eventually lead to World War I, and this was the direct trigger. Although, of course, yes, there were many other reasons that this happened. Without this assassination, the war wouldn't have break out, broken out, and even though not directly, um, Princip was responsible for the deaths of 15 to 19 million people during the next four years, which would last until November 11th, 1918. Not to even mention all the other wars that would happen after that. World War I was one of the bloodiest wars in history, and this is why I put Gavrilo Princip on this list. Now I know a lot of you people will disagree, but uh, nevertheless, if you liked the video, even if you disagreed with my argument, please give a like, and if you did agree, also give a like. Now don't forget to subscribe for anyone who hasn't, and I'll see you next time.